Yes, thank you. I'm Leah Sang Parkin. We are so excited you are here today for the Service Cloud keynotes, and it is my honor to get to do the forward looking statement. So please remember that we are a publicly traded company and to make purchasing decisions off of readily available products. And with that, Let's get this show started. Please welcome to the stage our VP of Product Marketing, Mark Abramowitz. All right. Thanks, Leah. Good morning and welcome. One of the most exciting parts and best parts of my job is that I get to talk to customers of all types, customer service executives, marketing executives, IT leaders. And what they're saying right now is that customer service is going through a massive transformation probably the most radical transformation that customer service has ever seen. And they're saying, they're asking, what can they do about it? And I, I tell them, and I think this is an opportunity for all of us here today, is that we're at a point where we have the right technology where we can um, transform the contact center from being cost-centric to being revenue-oriented and growth-oriented. That today, we have the right technology platforms that allow us to create really loyalty-driven and loyalty-based customer service experiences that are gonna help us grow, help all of our companies grow. And today what we're gonna talk about is that combination of the right technology and human-centric service. But first, I wanna say thank you for coming out here 10 o'clock on the last day of Connections after that awesome Gwen Stefani concert last night. It was bananas. And I wanna say thank you to our customers and thank you to our partners, because without you, we, we wouldn't be here. And so, 25 years ago, I was a college graduate, fresh out of school, without a job, and without really any money. And I was living in San Diego, um, but I knew I wanted to get to San Francisco, where the tech boom was happening. And so I was doing the drive, which is about a 450-mile drive between San Francisco and San Diego. And on one of those trips to San Francisco, I realized that I had a nail in my front left tire. And firstly, I was like, couldn't believe I actually made it back to San Francisco, but two, I didn't really under, figure out, I didn't know how I was gonna change that tire or pay for that tire. Found my local tire store, and that's when I met Jerome. Jerome, I went in there, and Jerome was behind the counter. And I went in and I pled my story, and I said, look, fresh out of school, don't have a job, but I got this problem with my tire, can you help me? He said, hold on, let's go take a look, don't move so quickly. So we went outside, he said, let me get my mechanic to take a look. So his mechanic came out, they took the car in, and about half an hour later, Jerome came back and said, all right, we're able to get the, tie, the, the nail out um, and patch it. But it's not going to last forever. You are going to have to replace that tire. But I think even at that moment, Jerome was thinking about the future and thinking about like, building loyalty with me because he said, this one's on the house. This one is, is on the house as long as you come back when you get that job and you come and replace the tire with me at my store. And so that's what I did. About a month later, I went back had finally gotten a job, and not only did I replace that one tire, I replaced all four. And that was the beginning of a lifelong relationship that I've had buying tires from Jerome. And the last time I bought tires from him, I actually did it on my couch, because Jerome took that in-person experience and has used technology to extend it out to where the customer is. And for me, that's me sitting on my couch after work. And so with two clicks, I can log in, he knew who I was, what, what tires I purchased in the past, what car I have, so one click to buy the tires and one click to schedule my installation. And really, what Jerome has done is he's figured out this formula that it's this combination of a loyalty-driven culture and the right technology that drives growth and uh, customer service experiences. And it's technology that's always been an underpinning of great customer service, whether it be the introduction of 800 number or the introduction of email or now the proliferation of apps and messaging all the way through to AI and IoT and smart devices. But every time you introduce a new piece of technology, you don't always get a better experience. With the introduction of the IVR, I'm not sure we got a better experience. Whenever I, you end up having to make that phone call and you get the phone tree and the number thing, and within a few seconds, I find myself yelling, operator or agent or agent, just to get through that queue so I can talk to somebody. And 67% of customers have left a brand because of a bad service experience. But on the other hand, 86% of customers say a positive emotional connection drives loyalty. And that's what Jerome did 25 years ago. 
is in that moment of need, he created an emotional connection and positive emotional connection for me, and I've been a loyal customer since. And it was that human connection. But I would say we need to go further than just making a connection. We actually need to deliver human-centric service. And human-centric service is how you deliver relevant experiences for your customers on any channel, in any context. It's about driving personal engagements for your agents. And so when your agent has a single view of the customer that's powered by AI, they can go beyond sort of the customer being a number or a transaction, and they can build personal relationships and engagements with those customers. And human-centric service is about building trusted relationships for your mobile workers. Because when your mobile worker or your field technician is out there in the field, they are the face of your brand. They're in your customer's home or your customer's place of business, and they're building trusted relationships. But remember, the formula or the equation is both this notion of loyalty and a loyal, loyalty culture, but it's also about technology. And it's the Salesforce three, Customer 360 platform that is the platform and the technology that delivers human-centric service. It's where service is connected to marketing, it's connected to commerce. It's where AI is in the middle and making smart recommendations and predictions. And it's where MuleSoft is bringing all that back office information into a single place. So you can transform your service organization from being cost-centric to being growth-oriented. And that's what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the three keys of driving and creating human-centric service. And the first chapter is talking about relevant. Expectations, customer expectations have, have changed, and they're changing all the time. Companies like Amazon and Uber and Lexus and Nordstrom have changed the game as to what customers expect. And that's why delivering relevant service now is more important than ever across the entire customer journey. Service is not only a post-purchase function. It doesn't only happen after you buy that service or that product from a company when you have a question or a problem. Service is everybody's business and is part of the entire journey. In the pre-purchase, service is there to, to add and work with sales and marketing to make sure that customers can ask questions about availability or product fit. It's also there in the purchase phase where you're doing <clears throat> in the store or online and you're checking out online to answer questions. Maybe there's a bot there to help you with sizing. And of course, service is there in the, in the pre-purchase, or sorry, in the post-purchase world. And the first step to delivering service across the customer journey and across the entire journey is to connect all of your customer data into one place. Take all of that uh, service, marketing, commerce, and back office information and connect it. And once you've connected it, you can make it available online so customers can help themselves. You can offer support across any channel and you can make those experiences better with bots. Because I know many people here are probably thinking, what's happening with bots? It's a new technology, how do we get started? And with our bots, they're built right into the service cloud, which means they are human-centric, and they are personal and relevant and trusted. And what's better is that our bots are Einstein bots for service. And so our bots can quickly resolve those routine requests, things like changing your password, changing an order, maybe making an appointment for an installation, and of course, answering those frequently asked questions. And when the bot can't handle those routine requests, they, it teams up with an agent. And it's that team of agents and bot that creates a, cus a, a customer satisfaction experience to seamlessly transfer in and solve that question quickly. And we know you want to put bots on, every, on all your different channels. And so we make it really easy to quickly add bots across all of your, all of your digital channels. And right now, I'm really excited to talk about some new ways you can connect with your customers. So, many of us have seen that sort of dead-end, old-school Contact Us page on a website or on a mobile application. But now, with the introduction of this channel menu, you can quickly embed messaging into every digital property, onto your website, onto your portal, or onto your community, and make it really easy for your customers to start that conversation with your service organization, whether that's pre-purchase, during the checkout phase, or after they've purchased your product. And we're extending our channels to new channels like WhatsApp and WeChat, and we're bringing bots to more of those channels across SMS and Facebook Messenger. When I talk to those customer service executives and those IT leaders, one of the things they ask for is they, they, they love what we're doing with bots, but they want to move faster. 
They want to be able to deploy bots without clicks, or without code, and only with clicks. And so we've, we've changed our bot builder and introduced a visual map. We've also introduced exact matching technology to make it easier for admins to create intents so the bot can understand what customers are asking for. And that's all done with clicks and not code. When you tie all this together, when you tie this, pers this, relevant pers this relevant and contextual experience across every channel, it drives customer retention. And when we talk to our customers, they tell us that we're increasing their retention by 23%. And if you think about what retention starts, it leads to loyalty, which ultimately leads to growth. And again, remember the formula that Jerome, that we're talking about here. It's about creating a culture of loyalty and using the right technology and adding in human-centric service. Time to talk about a customer. So I'm very excited to talk about ASICs, because ASICs is a trailblazer. ASICs, for the last 70 years, has been, using, uh, been on a mission. And their mission is to help improve people's lives through sport. And they've been doing it by innovating on their products and innovating on their technology. And they have really embraced this culture of, uh, this culture of loyalty and this, this technology platform by bringing service and marketing and commerce all together into a single platform. Let's take a look at their video. ASICS is a Latin phrase, and it means a sound mind and a sound body. ASICS is a fitness service company and a manufacturer of performance fitness wear and fashion clothing. Our job as a company is to figure out how we can connect better with the customer. Customer service and the experience for our end users is really critical in what we're trying to achieve. Six years ago, I don't think ASICS even had e-commerce. We were on a self-hosted e-commerce platform. Our COO said, we need to migrate to this new platform. We need you and your team to figure out how to do it. We had to bring in a lot of pretty complex data. So we wanted to leverage some cloud-based technology in order to do that data transformation. We migrated the whole project from one legacy platform onto the newer Salesforce platform. Mule software has made the integration simpler and faster. Mule software really helps us get our product information from our PIM system onto the Salesforce platform. The Salesforce Service Cloud plays a really vital role in the whole ASICS ecosystem. The Service Cloud comes when the customers need any help with any of their e-commerce experiences. For example, we are planning on having the chatbot Customers can simply start a chat with the customer service agent and get answers very easily. It provides our CS agents the ability to view customer orders in real time. Salesforce does help us articulate the single view of the customer through our online platforms where we have several brands live around the world. It's important for a customer service agent to be able to see all of the places that a customer has been interacting with ASICs. With that single view of the customer, we'll be able to provide a personalized experience on the e-commerce site. Customers are loyal to brands that they feel like they have a connection with and brands that put the customers first. And so Service Cloud will allow us to continue to give them that first class experience. It's been exhilarating to me to help transform ASICs and we've done a great job of really progressing the company and I'm super excited to help us make that transformation to being at the front of the pack. So that is an amazing story and now we're going to dive deeper and we're going to show you what that looks like for ASIC. So I'd like to welcome up Amanda West to take us through a demo. Come on up, Amanda. Thanks, Mark. All right. ASICS is a great brand, and they're connecting service with commerce and marketing, integrating all the back-end systems with MuleSoft to deliver relevant customer experiences that are really building brand loyalty. And I know all of you are probably thinking about this as well. So let's dive in and take a look how ASICS is aspiring to do this. So I am a big runner, and I'm getting ready for the Chicago Marathon. It's coming up in October. And ASICs, they have impeccable timing. They have just actually sent me an email promo. So I jump on the website, you know, put a couple of pairs of shoes in my shopping cart. Now this shopping cart has been created by Commerce Cloud, connected to the number one CRM platform. And Commerce Cloud allows you to create these cohesive, branded personal experiences across any device. Now, you know, I'm new to these sneakers, I need a little help, but I don't have time to go to the store. But what I do have time is for some help online. So I navigate to the ASICS Help Center and I start up a chat. 
With Salesforce, you can go ahead, you can embed artificial intelligence and service automation into any customer interaction to provide that instant help. What you're seeing right now is Einstein bot. It's smart. It knows me. It's even surfacing up a few menu options for help. But I have a question on sizing, so Einstein bot gets to work. Einstein bot is using natural language processing, and it sends me off a knowledge article on sizing. Now, I look at my watch, and I say, uh-oh, I'm late for yoga. Dash out, I forget all about my sneakers. But the next day, I receive a text from ASICS. ASICS has sent me an, a text message because they're using Marketing Cloud. They're ensuring that no sale is left behind because they allow you to create these customer journeys based on abandoned carts. So I re respond to that text message and I say, you know what, I just want one pair of sneakers. I am an engaged customer. I'm every marketer's dream. So you notice the bot's back again, but a quick flow has been kicked off. And now I have a series of questions really getting down to how do I get that number one sneaker for me. But then I notice that the bot is asking me a question around pronation and totally throws me for a loop, but that's okay, because I am transferred to an ASICS associate. So let's go ahead, let's check in with Lauren, the ASICS associate. Right now what we're seeing is Lauren's Lightning Service Cloud console. What you're gonna notice on the top of the screen is that she is working on multiple conversations across the channels. Gone are the day when one agent is tied up with one customer on the phone, because now with chat and messaging, Lauren can be even more efficient. Now, Lauren has been given my case because she's an expert in these sneakers. And when she accepts my conversation, she has everything she needs on a single screen. You're going to notice on the left-hand side, my complete customer profile is there. The center of the screen, she can see my shopping cart, my marketing journeys. She can even see my past purchases across those brands. Now, that purchasing information, it's locked up and third-party systems. So ASICS relies on MuleSoft APIs to bring that into Service Cloud. Fun fact, with MuleSoft, ASICS is able to deliver their IT projects in two and a half times faster. Pretty incredible. So we're going to look at the right-hand side of the screen, and you'll notice that Lauren can see all my digital engagement conversations across the channels. She can even pick up that conversation where that bot left off, which is super helpful. I don't need to repeat myself, which would be very frustrating. So now Lauren can really spend that time building that relationship. She's not tracking down information. This is truly a rich conversational experience. It is personal and it is relevant. This is how you build brand loyalty. Now Lauren's gonna go ahead. She's gonna help me out with that pronation that I have. What you're gonna notice in the left lower hand of the screen is that she's getting some help. Einstein next best action is fast at work. Einstein next best action is using business rules, predictive models to suggest to Lauren that, you know, she should go ahead and book that order on my behalf. So she accepts that challenge. She is guided through a series of steps to book that order for me. Now let's actually see what happens next. So now Einstein is still working really hard. And what Einstein is doing is suggesting that I'd be actually up for an ASIC studio. What is that? It's actually online fitness classes that is gonna help me prepare for my marathon. I'm also dropped into an email journey to ensure that I'm actually using this trial. I take advantage of it, hopefully buy. So ASICs, they are delivering more than a product. They are delivering an experience. And they're using Salesforce to do that. They're connecting service with commerce and marketing and integrating all of their third-party systems with MuleSoft so that they can deliver those relevant customer experiences that are building brand loyalty. And I want to give a shout out to my colleague, Porvi, who's done a wonderful job driving this demo today. And with that, I'd like to welcome back Mark Abramowitz. Thanks, Amanda. And uh, great shoes, by the way. So awesome to see that technology in action. Um, and showing you what ASICS is doing. But now we're gonna dive even a little deeper. And I'm excited to introduce the director of Global Omnichannel Product, Alice Mitchell. Coming up, Alice. And I wanna also talk about your shoes and oh. my shoes and my. You're awesome looking glorious. I repeat customer, say. repeat love customer. It. I love it. Very loyal, very loyal. So uh, as we've got started to get to know each other, um, I've been intrigued. I'm not exactly sure why, by your, by your title, 
of Glo Global Director of Omnichannel. So I'd love for you to explain a little bit kind of where that fits within the ASICs organization and kind of what, what, what you do day to day. Yeah, thank you, Mark. So ASICs is aspiring to know each customer, whether a marathoner <laughs> like Amanda or a new mom like myself who's just waddling around the block these days. <laughs> we don't need to know their fitness journey and be able to therefore deliver for them a truly integrated experience, to be able to experience A6 anywhere. So our omni-channel vision is to have that single view of the customer so that we can support them wherever they may be. Ultimately, we find that our day-to-day -day is connecting web, mobile, retail, but pushing farther than that to innovate the where. Instead of expecting customers to come to us, we can go to them. And with that, provide stronger, more frequent touch points with ASICs to drive brand love, loyalty, and ultimately customer lifetime value and growth for ASICs. I love the, um, as you say, innovate where, right? That, that's also something that stuck out as we were talking of really meeting your customers wherever they are, and whether it's in the store, on your mobile apps, or, or clearly online. Um, just thinking a little bit about the film we just saw where ASICs is a few years ago decided to move off their self-hosted uh, e-commerce platform and kind of start your relationship with Salesforce, with Commerce Cloud. Um, and I'd love for you to explain a little bit about how that's changed um, or is changing the, the relationship you have with your customers and what that journey looks like. Absolutely. So ASICS is this veteran of the sportswear industry. We have 70 years of technical expertise to develop the highest performing footwear and apparel, but we're quite new to the digital world. And our partnership with Salesforce allows us to become truly customer-centric for the first time. We're seeing speed at scale like never before. We can move a lot faster and ultimately deliver things like Endless Isle or Shoe Finder in a global way, but also customized to the widely varying needs of customers in Tokyo, New York, London, Sydney. Ultimately, we have to be able to understand and bring a personalized approach, but move beyond the transactional, become more fully experiential and there for each step of the journey towards health and fitness goals of any consumer. Yeah, again, I think that this philosophy of loyalty or even philosophy around getting past the transaction, because we know that customers are making decisions on, pro on buying things and buying products really about the experience rather than the product itself these days. And it's great to see ASICs combining your product innovation now with sort of this customer innovation that you're focused on. I completely agree. And I have to, to speak to Amanda's points earlier. We're moving our call centers as truly coaches and fundamental fitness partners as opposed to just customer service representatives. It's an evolution in how we see that role and coming full circle through that fitness journey of each of our consumers. It's another great thing of moving from agents to coaches, right? I, I love it. And so just to wrap up, I'd love to hear your perspective on sort of the, the broader business implications that this has had for ASICs as, as a global organization and kind of this, what, what, what set this in motion really? Ultimately, we see omni-channel customers as our highest intent, greatest opportunity for truly understanding those most committed to health and fitness goals that we can support throughout their journey with ASICs. And that is a tremendous opportunity as we look to unify and provide a seamless ASICs experience anywhere. And that's where we're taking this work. Awesome. So thank you very much. Really appreciate you thank joining you, us here today and ASICs as a trailblazer. And now we're going to move on, and I'm going to welcome up to the stage my friend and colleague, Taxina Amana, to take us into the next chapter. Hi. All right. Thanks, Mark. All right, let's go. So when we talk about personalization, it's often in the context of our customer's point of view. But today we're going to talk about how we drive truly personal engagement. And that happens with folks who are interacting with our customers on the front line, our service agents. So personalization, you know, it's really important, right, in the world of commerce and marketing. But in service, that interaction's happening real time. So an agent needs to know what they bought, who the customer is, what they need next, and what the issue might be. And as Mark said, that's also happening in the pre-purchase phase. So we need to know the campaign that they were a part of, the marketing segment they're a part of, and, you know, you know where have they been on our website? So building that picture is really, really hard. 
agents need to think about what they need, all that information, and act on it really quickly. So if you think about where everyone's going and where all of this information is coming together, agents need relevant content in context and fast, which is why we've built not only a complete view of the customer, but a single view of the customer. With the Customer 360 platform, it's one place where all your data across all those systems are coming into, the play, into one view. And with the Lightning Service Console, you have it right here. It's able for an agent to have one single view and the ability to act on it. That information is being captured and it's built with guided automation. This is made for productivity. So right here, you have the ability, if you are resolving an issue with one contact or you swarm as a, you know, a team to really resolve that customer issue, you have the ability to customize the screen, the screen just the way you want. It's right for any organization. Now, embedded in the platform is automation and AI. And I spend a lot of time talking to customers about when to use automation and AI. And it can sometimes run counterintuitive to kind of delivering that human-centric service, which is why you have to find this right balance between optimizing for productivity and also leveraging that human expertise. So at Salesforce, we're thinking about bringing all of this and helping our agents in three ways. You assist with productivity tools to make it easy for those common actions and common tasks. We're going to augment them with intelligence, helping them to scale and move faster than ever, they ever have before. And then we upskill them with training because their role becomes more strategic and it's changing. So let's dive in quickly. So we are building lots of functionality around assisting agents with productivity, making those repeatable tasks really easy, from a singleized knowledge base to where you're using macros for those repeatable actions, we have all these step-by-step -step business processes so you don't have to remember what you need to do next. And it's guiding you through your workflows, those common workflows. And we, with our collaboration tools, you can collaborate even faster than before, bringing together all that information to help resolve that customer's issue. OK, so next, we augment the agents with intelligence. AI is embedded across the platform. And right here, AI is able to route that case, predict the fields, and suggest knowledge articles. It even can suggest the, and surface these common responses from your previous chat conversations. Now, think about this. When we use this on Salesforce and we use it for our support, we, we saw a 92% accuracy on case classification when we were classifying our cases. Can you imagine how valuable that would be using intelligence for your organization? All right. And that moment, it's not just about connecting with the brand. You have an opportunity, as Mark says, to make this a growth moment. And we have the ability to surface these cross-sell and upsell opportunities so your agents can also be a revenue-generating center for you. Now, we know the role of the service agent is changing, and we need to arm them with the right skills. So it's not only the technology that's changing, but there are soft skills to, to really help them provide that human-centric service, which is why we created the Trailblazers of the Future program. And this is our commitment to empowerment. It's online workshops, training, local gatherings with peer-to-peers, this community is 30,000 people strong. And our event is right here in Chicago, July 18th. So please join us if you can. So, OK, we bring all of that in. But what does that mean? Our agents see in the contact center an average of 29% increase in productivity. But why does that matter? Well, think about it. Your agents are no longer keeping your customers on hold, trying to look for information, searching through all the different knowledge articles. They're able to spend the time focusing on you, building that personal relationship, knowing what to do next, and being able to create the kind of brand experience that you want. So let's go take a look at a customer who is leveraging the power of the platform today to deliver human-centric service. 
State Farm. State Farm is a trailblazer. For 97 years, they have been, and they're all here. Hi, State Farm. Um, for 97 years, they have been really delivering for us and our customers the ability to be there when things go wrong, but also when life goes right. They're partnering with Salesforce to really arm their agents to be empowered to deliver that personal service. Did you know that they process 38,000 claims a day? 38,000. And actually, not long ago, one of those was mine. So, I recently moved from Manhattan to the suburbs of San Francisco. And guess what? We have wild turkeys. This is the one crossing the street. And in the glaring light and the sun, I needed to like swerve and I avoided the turkey. But what ended up happening was I clipped the side of my car. So let's go talk, take a look at an aspirational demo of how State Farm can deliver personal service for an incident like this for me. Okay, so this is my iPhone and it's loaded with the award-winning State Farm mobile app. Right here, they're making it super easy for me to be able to submit my claim online. And we saw earlier that Einstein bots can actually answer all those questions for you. But Einstein bots also does something else important. Critically, it can capture information for you and actually route it to the right agent. So I have a question. So, do I don't know if my um, rental car would be covered under my coverage. So I ask the question. And right here, I'm transferred to a claims agent. And this claims handler, his name's Neil Armstrong. Yes, his name's actually Neil Armstrong. Neil, can you wave to the audience? There we go. Hi, Neil. OK. All right. Um, it's not every day you get to share the stage with Neil Armstrong. I think it's like once in a blue moon. <laughs> OK. So let's go take a look at Neil's service console. Right here in Neil's service console, State Farm has configured this as the lost reporting app. And he has been routed a case because he's a claims handler and it's because he's specializing in claims. He goes ahead and he accepts it. And right here, he has my 360 degree profile. He knows about my policy, my car, all of my details. Right here, so he can begin personalizing his service for me right away. In the middle here, all that information from the bot has been gathered and he is now able to continue the conversation. With quick text and standard responses, he's able to give me those answers very quickly. On the right, you're gonna see something cool. These are knowledge articles that have been suggested. We're using machine learning to suggest these articles that have been used successfully in other cases. And right here, he can now add this to the chat and help me get on my way. He's creating that consistency. It has the brand response. He doesn't have to worry anymore. OK, so just like that, he's helped me. But guess what? He also sees that there's a recommendation. It's telling him that he should help me submit, continue to submit my claim. Now, let's talk about that for a minute. This is the exact same flow that was happening in my mobile app. And he's now able to pick that up and continue it. Can you imagine what's that, what that would be like for your organization if your customer and your agents were always on the same page? It's incredibly powerful. And so he now can go ahead and complete that flow. And he's entering the information. He tells me I'm all set and ready to go. And that's it. My claim is submitted. So let's fast forward a couple of days and we're going to see Neil. Let's check in with him. He's getting an email, and basically this case has been routed to him. The body shop's saying, it's going to take a couple more days because there's more damage to my car. What's happening is the case details are actually getting filled out here. They're being suggested for him based on Einstein's case classification. Right here, we're using machine learning for these incoming cases to really pre-populate and pre-suggest what these values are. So Neil's going to go ahead and suggest, accept those values. What is going on every time he accepts that is that he's training the model each time. All right, so as he did that, the context of the case changed, and he's recommended another action to extend my rental car. Clicks on that and goes ahead and starts entering that in. He can now extend my rental car. This is a game changer for agents like Neil. 
He doesn't need to remember anymore what the next step is. He can now at any time be focused on me and work through that case without having to remember what his next steps are. This is what the power of that automation is. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this case and run a macro. And as he accepts that for the repeatable task, take a look. It's automatically changing. Neil, are you sure you're not doing anything? I'm not doing anything, Taxina. This is amazing. It's automating all of these tasks for me, making it quick and easy for me to close the case and spend more time focusing on building great relationships with customers like you. <laughs> That's awesome. So in one click, he was able to do 11 tasks, right, steps. And one of those was actually to inform my insurance agent, Emma, of the details so that she can stay connected and informed with me. Isn't that incredible? Okay, and so that there is a vision of how you can leverage the platform all in one place, connecting service across your entire department. And that's just a glimpse into how State Farm um, can leverage AI and automation to really deliver personal and proactive service. And with that, I'd like to welcome up on stage from State Farm, Jason Potts. Thanks for joining us, Jason. You bet. Sina, thank you. Awesome. So you've been at State Farm for like 20 years in technology. Can you tell us a little bit about what led you to this you know, journey of rethinking your service solution? Absolutely. Um, our focus has always been on the customer. But what we've recognized is that that technology stack that we've created over the last almost 100 years hasn't always provided that great customer experience, especially as our customers are, are looking to more digital preferences. And so I think, like, like many of you, our biggest challenge has been around integration with these legacy technologies, and how do we really do that at, at scale and at pace? So what we've done is we've leveraged Salesforce as our system of engagement to really provide that integration layer and to also help us bridge that gap. That's awesome. And so let's talk a little bit about integration because we talked about delivering personal service. Yeah. And it's hard to bring all that data in. So talk a little bit about what your strategy has been there. Yeah. So in terms of data, you know, State Farm has more autos insured with us, more homeowners than any other company in America. And so we have a tremendous amount of data. But we don't master all that in Salesforce. We master a lot of that in those back-end systems, our policy administration system, our claim systems, a lot of the other back-end processing. And so we are, we are leveraging Salesforce to create that front-end 360-degree view and master that customer data mm. and then integrate with those back-end systems. Similar to what you saw in this claims system, we've recently deployed our loss reporting on the Salesforce platform, and it allows our claim reps to, to really use Salesforce to bring those 38,000 claims that we receive every day into State Farm and then seamlessly integrate with that back-end. I'm sure you have many customers in the audience today, actually. Okay, and then so, you know, insurance, like many industries, continues to get disrupted. How do you think about innovation and what's next for State Farm? Yeah, so it's, it's hard to predict what five to ten years in the future is going to bring for the insurance and financial services industry. Mm -hmm. um, but we know that we need to continue to adapt and that technology is going to be central to that change. We recognize that our customers want to meet us in a multitude of ways and we need to be there to meet them regardless of the channel. We're leveraging technologies like AI and automation and Salesforce uh, to, to help us meet our goal, which is really to help more people in more ways for many years to come. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us, Jason. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, to take us through the next chapter of human-centric service, Emily Kofsky. When people invite, if people invite service into their home or place of work, it's essential that you provide reliable service when it counts in order to build that trust. When service is face-to-face, -face, trust is essential. 
Now, before joining Salesforce, I worked at a large energy company in product management where I helped build service applications that dispatch installation and repair crews all over the world. When most people think about service, they're thinking about those break-fix scenarios or technicians. But field service is more than that. Field service is merchandising in stores for retail execution. It's financial advisors going into people's homes, or it's home healthcare workers. For example, my mom recently had shoulder surgery, and she was lucky enough to have uh, the type of insurance that sent physical therapists into her home. My mom really liked her physical therapist, but her physical therapist would sometimes show up really frazzled because she was late due to traffic. Or sometimes she would bring the wrong equipment from the car, you know, the exercise band instead of the exercise ball, and that would eat into the appointment time. Imagine if this physical therapist had the tools that she needed to optimize her schedule, to route her quickly from patient to patient, and to give her a list of everything that she needed to do while she was at that appointment so that she could provide that very specialized human care instead of all the logistics of an appointment. 90% of consumers say that in-person service is a reflection of their brand, for better or for worse. How can you deliver that optimized, personalized service? Well, it starts with the dispatcher, the person who gets the right people and the right resources to the right place on time. And with the field service lightning console, that scheduling can be dynamic. It's intelligent. It takes into account current inventory levels, the skill sets of all of the workers, and historical Google traffic patterns. And because Field Service Lightning is built right on that same Salesforce platform as sales, service, commerce, and marketing, the dispatcher has a 360-degree view of the customer. Now, what are the tools that your employees need to be one and done that first time that they're on that job site? Well, with Lightning Flows, guided processes can make complex jobs very simple with step-by-step -step, step -step guidance. And with inventory management, all of your equipment and your widgets are actually attached to the platform so you can gauge uh, consumption and those return orders. And now with the ability to generate an opportunity or even a quote inside of the Field Service Lightning app, they can generate revenue, providing that excellent service, building loyalty, and growing business. Now let's talk about a customer who's doing this very well today using all of our tools. The container store uh, is a favorite of mine these days because I just bought a new home and my closets are not proportional to the size of the rooms. I need their organizational and storage systems. And my colleague here, Allison, who's a beautiful seven months pregnant, is in the same boat. She needs a place to store all of those baby clothes that she has currently in boxes on her floor. So she recently bought an Alpha closet storage system. Even though she's here in Chicago, she needs to schedule an appointment for her installation this Saturday after she gets back home. So she goes to the container store's self-service website. This beautiful website that you're seeing right here was built on Community Cloud using templates. This was built with clicks and drops, not with code, using our brand new content management system. And because Allison is logged into the website, because she's authenticated, the container store knows all of her past activity online, all of those purchases, all those purchases that she's made. So it can serve up to her an FAQ, or in this case, a knowledge base article that's really relevant to her about how to get ready for her closet installation this Saturday. She quickly browses that content, she quickly browses that FAQ and she decides that she's ready to go for her installation this Saturday. She wants all those baby clothes out of boxes on the floor and into her brand new closet. So she clicks on book an appointment. Field Service Lightning now embeds appointment booking right inside of any website. And these times that are going to be served up to her, they're not just any time during the day. They're based on current inventory levels, the skill sets and the trainings that all of those installers have taken. And they also take into account historical Google traffic patterns. So she books her appointment and she's all set for Saturday. All right, now let's take a look at what the dispatcher sees inside of the field service lightning console. Remember the dispatcher, the right place to the right time, there are all the people. All right, when the dispatcher logs into the field service lightning console, they have a complete view of all of those third party installers, all of those container store employees, and all of those crews, what they're doing for the day. 
Now let's take a look at Allison's specific closet installation. When the dispatcher hovers over this, they can see that it's predicted to be 23% faster than the average job. But why is this? How? Well, even though Leah, the installer in this case, is a brand new employee, she's pretty speedy. And the container store knows that they can track and reward her appropriately for being quicker. It also takes into account, as I was saying before, those historical Google traffic patterns. Now, when a dispatcher uses field service lightning, a lot of those manual calculations are taken out of, are taken out of the way because when they click on that, uh, on that work order, everything is already scheduled. And the dispatcher, they can really specialize and make those more high calorie decisions, really providing that expertise to make the job just perfect. And so in this instance, what they're doing is evaluating Einstein recommendations. Einstein can decide, uh, Einstein recommends additional inventory. In this case, the highly specialized dispatcher can decide whether or not they want to add it to the job. In this case, they add it to the job, and then we're all set and off to the races for Saturday. Okay, now let's fast forward in time. It's Saturday, you all are back home. <laughs> and it's installation day. Allison is woken up by a text message letting her know about her upcoming closet installation. But, uh-oh, Allison isn't feeling so well. She's got the queasies. So she responds to the text message asking if she can postpone her appointment. Now, because the SMS bot in this instance has been trained to read her intent, it automatically offers her some options to postpone her appointment until later in the day. Allison accepts those suggestions, gets an appointment for later in the day, and goes back to cat napping. All right, now the next text message that Allison receives is to let her know that her closet installer, Leah, is on the way. When she opens up this text message, what's great is it has a picture of Leah to let her know the person is going to be coming to her home. It also lets her know the progress of Leah's vehicle to her home. No more four-hour wait windows. She can get that glass of lemonade ready just in time to greet Leah at her home. Okay, now let's take a look at what Leah, the installer, is seeing before she puts her car into drive. She has a complete view of her entire day's schedule, all of the, all of the site visits that she needs to make, and a list of, uh, excuse me, and all of, her, all, of the, all the suggested drives that she's going to be making for the day. Okay, now when Leah gets to Allison's home, she's provided with a new set of lists. And these are guided flows that can help her get those complex jo jobs done very quickly. Lightning flows are great for newer, uh, newer employees like Leah because it can reduce that training time, but also make her more accurate on the job right out of the gate. The first list that she goes through is her safety check because safety first, she makes sure that her list is OSHA, or she makes sure that her installation is going to be OSHA compliant. And then we're going to take a little bit of creative liberties here and we're going to pretend that Leah is a, uh, Leah's a very speedy installer and that she gets the job done in five minutes. It's, sorry, in five seconds flat. All of the pictures that Leah takes during her installation are automatically attached to the service report and then she can present her phone to Allison for signature. How easy was that? All right, now there's one more step that Leah needs to take to make sure that this is an exceptional service experience. She notices that Leah has, excuse, excuse me, she notices that Allison has other closets. So she offers, up to, she offers up to Allison another closet consultation. And because Allison has had such an unparalleled service experience, she decides that she wants another closet for her guest room. So Leah generates a quote. Allison accepts, that, uh, Allison accepts that quote, and then she's purchased another closet system. How great is that? Leah has gone from being a service provider to a trusted advisor. Leah is generating revenue for the container store. Now, when we ask service leaders about opportunities with field service lightning, 80% of them are saying that uh, field service represents new revenue streams. So what you're seeing here is that service can grow your business. Service is going from a cost center to a profit center. Now to show you how you can blaze your trails when you go back home, I'd like to bring Mark back up to the stage to take you through, <laughs> to take you through what you need to know to be successful back home. All right, thanks Emily, great job showing us how a container store is driving revenue through their installation processes. And so, sort of rolling back to the top, right? Three keys to powering human-centric service. To be relevant, to be personal, and to be trusted. 
And that, remember that formula, that formula of the culture of loyalty. How do you drive loyalty throughout your organization combined with the right technology platform is how you deliver human-centric service. And that's relevant experiences for your customers across every channel. It's driving personal engagement for your agents through this unified workspace and AI-powered experience. And as we saw from Emily, it's about building those trusted relationships in the customer's home or in the customer's um, place of business. And that is how you transform your customer service organization from being cost-centric to being growth-oriented, because that's how you deliver a 27% increase in customer satisfaction. Another something I'm very excited about is just last week, Gartner recognized Salesforce for the 11th year in a row as a leader in the Customer Engagement Center Magic Quadrant. And this is really another opportunity for me to thank all of you, because it's our customers and our partners that have put Salesforce in this position and helped us be a leader for 11 years in a row. And with that, just some quick reminders. We're, we're doing a Trailblazers and Service panel starting in a few minutes where you can hear from some other Trailblazers. Encourage you to come check out the Customer Engagement Lodge for service, commerce, and marketing together. And I highly encourage you to check out the Trailblazer community where you find 30,000 service professionals who are passionate about this transformation of going from a cost center to revenue, orient, revenue growth for customer service. And with that, I'd like to say thank you and have a great day.